Unfortunately, Scotty is his worst spokesperson. I don't see many uh, bad back games, but I do see <laughs> flu games. The reason the flu game's iconic is because Jordan scored 38. The reason the bad back game isn't is because Scotty scored eight. You're calling Phil a racist. I don't got a problem with that. Do you think Phil was? Or is? Oh, uh, yeah. How much rent does Michael pay Scotty in his head? What did you think when he said he was going to go play baseball? It was, a, it was a selfish decision, but it was kind of... Uh, who Michael Jordan was. As you just heard over the past few months, Scottie Pippen has had a lot of opinions and they have been extreme to say the least. Recently, Scottie Pippen has accused Phil Jackson of being racist. He's called Michael Jordan a snitch and called him selfish for something relating to his own father's death, which we are going to get into. And Scottie has also made controversial claims about the 1992 NBA Finals, the flu game, his relationship with past teammates in general, including saying, one player had alcohol on his breath during practice. You get the point. Again, recently Scottie Pippen has decided to become very controversial. And so today we are going to find out, is there any credibility to these statements? Is Scottie Pippen telling the truth here? Is he lying to get attention or is the answer somewhere in between? So what's up guys, Mike here. And yes, that is what we are going to be doing today. Because if you didn't know, Scottie Pippen just released his book Unguarded and in it, he calls out Michael Jordan a lot. So so in turn, what I did is I read the book in a single day and I found a lot of controversial statements about Michael Jordan. Honestly, there were so many, but this video just contains the best ones. Trust me, guys, this video is going to open up your eyes even more when it comes to Scottie Pippen. Before we get started, though, I do want to say, yes, please subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. But also when I hit 1.7 million subscribers, I was supposed to do a giveaway where I gave away a PS5 or an Xbox Series X. Now, I did choose a winner for that giveaway. Giveaway. However, the winner of the giveaway never hit me up on Twitter. In fact, I received a bunch of messages from fake accounts, and that is the reason that it's taken so long. Those accounts popped up, claimed to have won the PS5, and then they were not able to give proof. So now, because I don't have a real winner, I still want to give away the PS5 or an Xbox Series X. So I'm going to do that. Next week, I'm going to give away a PS5 or an Xbox Series X to one person who subscribed. So if you missed out on the first giveaway, here's your next chance. To anyone who is subscribed with post notifications on, again, I will be announcing the winner next week. Anyone who is subscribed with post notifications on has a chance to win. For now though, let's get into today's video where right away in Scotty Pippen's book, before the book really begins in the prologue, Scotty begins to make some interesting statements because Scotty Pippen made statements such as this. In response to Scotty waiting until October of 1997 to get surgery on his foot, a situation where Scotty purposely did not get surgery in order to screw over his own team's front office, which in turn screwed over his teammates as Scotty did miss the beginning of the season and did not play a basketball game until January 10th. Pippen had this to say after Michael Jordan called Scotty selfish in the last dance. How dare Michael call me selfish? You want to know what selfish is? Selfish is retiring right before the start of training camp when it is too late for the organization to sign free agents. When Michael put the Bulls in that position in 1993, Jerry Krause was forced to bring in a journeyman, Pete Myers, who had most recently played for a team in Italy. Now, at face value, that might seem like an interesting statement. However, Michael Jordan's father was murdered on July 23rd, 1993, right in the middle of NBA free agency. To say that Michael Jordan was selfish because he took a few months after his father's death to retire to play baseball in his father's memory? I don't know. To me, that just seems like a horrible statement to make, especially when Scotty himself in his own book proves that he is a hypocrite as in his book when discussing the 1990 NBA playoffs, Scottie Pippen talks about beating the Philadelphia 76ers and says the following. I don't remember much about that series. Basketball was the last thing on my mind. Shortly before game two, one of my brothers called to say dad had 24 hours to live. He passed away the next day at the age of 69. It is perfectly understandable for basketball to be the last thing on his mind. For him to call out Michael Jordan for doing the same thing? That to me just isn't right. And really when it comes to Scottie Pippen's statements, when it comes to his book, that seems to be the complete theme here. Because when calling people out, Scottie Pippen has a tendency to stretch the truth or leave out facts. Because continuing on in the timeline here, to set the stage here, we are in game six of the 1992 NBA Finals, where heading into the fourth quarter, the Blazers were up by 
15 points. And this is what Scotty had to say about that fourth quarter. Beginning the fourth quarter with the second unit and myself on the floor, Michael stayed on the bench. We turned the game around. Bobby Hansen, a guard we acquired from the Sacramento Kings early in the season, hit a huge three-pointer to launch a 14-2 run. The score was 81-78 to in favor of the Blazers when Michael came back with about eight and a half minutes remaining. Phil had kept him on the bench a few minutes longer than usual. The Blazers were done. The final, 97-93. to Now, that sounds all in good, except as we are about to find out, Michael Jordan closed this game out. We will get into that because I do want to finish off with Scottie Pippen's remarks on this game. I can think of no better illustration of what the game of basketball is about. The team, not any one individual. Except not a word about the comeback was shown in the documentary as if it never happened. Why not? The answer is obvious. It wouldn't have enhanced Michael's legacy to show his supporting cast being the difference in such a game of such magnitude. And that is where we're going to stop. Scotty, in this instance, is trying to make it seem like Michael Jordan was playing selfish in game six of the 1992 NBA Finals. And because of this, the Bulls were losing. And then at the start of the fourth quarter, Scotty and a few other guys helped lead them back into the game, where then they cruised to a victory. That was not the case. This was a very close game. And yes, Scotty emphasized himself leading a comeback but did not mention Michael Jordan and in those final eight and a half minutes Michael Jordan scored 12 points going even further here with around 36 seconds left Michael Jordan made a very very clutch basket to give the Bulls a four point lead he then on the very next possession up two, was fouled knocked down both clutch free throws and gave his team a four point win this just brings us back though to what I've been emphasizing and it's that Scotty loves to leave out information like this he mentions the comeback the Bulls had at the beginning of the fourth quarter to reinforce that this was a team proceeds to claim that the last dance left that out of the documentary because it didn't make Michael Jordan look good and just so happens to forget to mention that Michael Jordan actually scored 12 points in the fourth quarter closed out the game and looked amazing if I'm going to be honest and again talking themes of this book I do feel like in a lot of ways Scotty wrote this to get the recognition he felt he deserved I just feel like he went about this all the wrong way he ignores a lot about the situations that took place and really tries to paint a narrative that didn't exist and guys there is no sponsor for today's video but i do want to say right now my podcast laced up is 23 episodes in if you haven't checked it out already i highly highly suggest you do so we post the podcast weekly we have a ton of fun we're about to go to two podcasts a week the link to the latest podcast which includes the discussion of is steph curry going to retire as the greatest point guard of all time is in the description of this video it is also the pinned comment of this video please go check it out please go subscribe turn on post notifications so Support your boy, you know. And other than that, let's get back into this video. A perfect example of this pops up during Scottie Pippen's rookie season. As Scottie remembers, in 1988, the following took place. First, Scottie mentions that the Bulls won 10 of their final 13 games and proceeds to say, One reason for our success was the play of Sam Vincent, the point guard acquired from Seattle shortly before the trade deadline. While Sam could score, his job was to get the ball to Michael, and he did that very well. In 29 games with the Bulls, he averaged more than eight assists. And that is it. That is all Scotty mentions about the team's success, which means Scotty failed to mention that during those last 13 games, Michael Jordan averaged 38.8 points, 4.6 rebounds, 4.8 assists, 3.4 steals, 1.1 blocks, and shot over 56% from the field. So yes, Scotty Pippen leaves out information that is not convenient to him. It is clear Michael Jordan carried the Bulls on his back in these final 13 games, but for whatever reason, the only person that is mentioned is Sam Vincent. Now, in this book, Scotty does compare himself to Michael almost every page, it seems, and while making these comparisons, he does compare himself very favorably. The problem is that some of Scotty's thoughts, or conspiracies, I'll say, just seem way too out there. For instance, Scotty mentions that during the 1990 season, him and Jordan had a competition. Who could end up with the most steals? This apparently led to both of them watching their steal numbers quite a bit, and Scotty has a very interesting conspiracy conspiracy theory here. He says when it came to Jordan, it was never a fair fight. Not because Michael was a better defender, heavens no. It was because Michael was better at getting people to do whatever he wanted. Here's how it worked. Say I deflected the ball and tapped it over to him. I should get credit with the steal, right? Nope. 
More often than not, the steel went into his column onto the stat sheet and I could do nothing about it. Let's just think about this logically here. How many times in a single season could Scotty's situation even happen? Specifically, tipping the ball away from another opponent directly into Michael Jordan's hands. Now, unfortunately with Scotty, it does feel like there is a theme here. And that theme is that Scotty believes a lot of people throughout his career were out to get him in some way. One of the best examples I can show you of this took place during the 1992 season where according to his book Scotty feels like he was slighted for the MVP let me explain after an incredible season by Scotty Pippen where the Bulls finished 67 and 15 and Scotty averaged over 20.7 rebounds and seven assists a night Scotty wrote this there was talk I might win the MVP I could have a triple double every night and the writers would never vote for me over Michael lo and behold Michael won the award for the third time in five years I came in ninth. When it comes to the 1992 MVP race, I do understand that Scotty had an incredible season. The thing is, when we compare his numbers to Michael Jordan's, it doesn't exactly take a rocket scientist to figure out who is going to win the MVP here and who is going to finish ninth. And with that said, guys, even though this could be a 40 minute video, this is the final thing we're going to be talking about. And I think it's a great one because if you didn't know, during the 1993 NBA playoffs in game three of the Eastern Conference, Conference semifinals against the New York Knicks. With 1.8 seconds to go, the Bulls were tied and Phil Jackson drew up the play for Tony Kukoc. And in Scotty's own words, in the book, he told Phil, F you when Phil drew the play for him and then of course decided to sit on the bench a play that he later refers to as giving up on his team now what's crazy about this play is that Scotty for whatever his reasoning does not feel sorry or bad for any of this in the slightest Scotty would say by not going back in the game I did the right thing not just for myself and my pride also for the players who would come after me who one day might very well find themselves in the same position um Scotty hate to break it to you but if we want watched any superstar, if we watched any NBA player refuse to go into the game for the final moments because the play was not drawn up for him, the entire world would criticize that player. Just listen to how Scotty describes the situation after the game. The locker room felt like a morgue. He then proceeds to say that Bill Cartwright, the co-captain of the team, with tears in his eyes, addressed everyone in the locker room saying this, this is our chance to do it on our own without Michael and you blow it with your selfishness. I had never been so disappointed in my whole life which means yes we are at the point in the video where we are going to talk about the phil jackson racism remarks because back in june scotty pippen suggested that phil jackson was a racist because he chose tony kukos to take the last shot over scotty pippen you're calling phil a racist i don't got a problem with that do you think phil was is. Oh, yeah. But the weirdest thing to me here is that if you were to look at Scotty's book, you would think that him and Phil were just fine. In fact, you would assume because he says it that Scotty regrets all of this. Here's what Scotty said in the book. Many were also surprised in June when during a couple of interviews, I suggested Phil was a racist and that was why he designed Tony to take the last shot. Nothing could be further from the truth. I was so hurt when he picked Tony over me that I needed to come up with an explanation for why I was rejected. So I told myself at the time that Phil's decision must have been racially motivated and I allowed myself to believe that lie for nearly 30 years. A bit to unpack from that statement, the first thing is I do understand Scotty's point of view where he was the man and he wanted the last shot in the game's crucial moments, but the thing is throughout this entire book and trust me when I say it almost gets mentioned on every page, Scotty continues to say basketball is a team game. I of course agree with him, basketball is a team game, but if basketball is a team game then how do you sit on the bench and watch your team play out the final moments of a playoff game because you're mad that you didn't get the last shot called for you. Seems a bit hypocritical. Then, as if this situation wasn't strange enough, a writer for the New York Times actually interviewed Scottie Pippen, and as you could see right here, during this interview, the following exchange took place. Your interview with Dan Patrick in the spring made a lot of headlines. You said it was racist for Phil Jackson not to draw up the play for you in the famous 1.8 second game. 
game. You walk that back in the book. What made you walk that back in the book? Scotty, what made me walk it back? Yeah, Scotty, I didn't walk it back. I didn't have it in the book. I said it was probably not right for me to say that about Phil being racist at this stage. It's water under the bridge now. But at that point in time, based on where I was as a player, the year that I was having, I thought it was a bad move on his part. Just to clarify, because I just want to make sure I don't put words in your mouth, you don't think that Phil was racist in designating Tony Kukoc to take that last shot. Scotty, did I say it? What are you asking? Okay, in your book, and I'm quoting you here, Scotty, wait, 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 have you heard me say that I said that? Well, yeah, I watched the interview. Okay, so I said it. Now, what are you asking me? In your book, you write, so you call it a lie? So I just want to clarify exactly what it is. Do you or do you not believe that Phil was being racist when he drew up that play? Scotty, I feel like it was a moment where he did me wrong. How about that? How about I answer your question that way? This same writer in a tweet said that Scotty took issue with many of his questions and at one point didn't seem aware of what he wrote in the book. Afterwards, he canceled a photo shoot. So as you just saw from that interview in the New York Times, a writer specifically asked Scotty, do you believe Phil is racist? And he would not say that Phil wasn't racist for whatever reason. Even though in his book, he said Phil wasn't racist, he said he made a mistake. Call me crazy, but I don't think you should just be tossing around the word racist if you don't fully believe it. And there we have it, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I've already basically given my thoughts on this entire Scotty Pippen situation. So I want to know what you guys think. Definitely comment down below what you think about Scotty, what you think about Jordan, what you think about this entire situation. Also, remember, subscribe and turn on post notifications because next week I'm giving away a PS5 or an Xbox Series X to someone who is subscribed. If you're already subscribed, don't worry. You are also entered into the giveaway. And on top of that you're awesome we all know it and as always guys have an awesome day and cue that music if you're still here while the music is cued here are two videos i think you are definitely going to enjoy make sure to click on one of them again i know you're gonna love it and other than that have a great day and peace